Hi, this is Dr. Pallavi Patri. I'm a consultant nephrologist at Columbia Asia Hospital in Sarjapur Road. And I'm here today on World Kidney Day to discuss your kidney health. So worldwide, there are now estimated to be 850 million people suffering from some form of kidney disease. 2.4 million of those patients have what is called chronic kidney disease, where it becomes a persistent medical condition. In India, we don't have uh, clear numbers as to what the incidence or prevalence is of kidney disease as we don't have a well-established kidney registry across the country. But it's estimated to be about 200 people per million or so, over that actually, who have uh, uh, chronic kidney disease. And there are uh, about 200,000, over 200,000 patients who are on dialysis. And actually that number is increasing at a rate of 10 to 15 percent per year. Um, so the burden of kidney disease in India is actually pretty substantial. Um, so your kidneys are pretty amazing organs. They actually do a lot of things. Uh, the kidneys are most important for cleaning the body of toxins, maintaining electrolyte and acid base balance. They also maintain your fluid balance. So they get rid of uh, excess water from the body. But they're also important for many other, uh, to maintain many other aspects of your health, including your bone health. And they actually also help uh, produce red blood cells. So they maintain your blood cell count. So when your kidneys start to malfunction, very often in the very early stages of kidney disease, you may not have any symptoms at all. Very often, uh, kidney disease goes silent and undetected for many, many years, and only when in the more advanced stages do we actually start having symptoms. Well, the symptoms in advanced kidney, uh, kidney disease may include things like swelling around the legs, swelling around the eyes, a decrease in urine output, blood in the urine or foamy appearance to the urine, as well as some very subtle uh, s signs and symptoms like general fatigue, uh, some nausea, vomiting, a decrease in appetite, difficulty with sleep, sometimes dry and itchy skin. Um, sometimes kidney disease uh, can be associated with other conditions and may manifest with rash or joint pains, uh, sometimes hair loss. So the symptoms may be very subtle. Uh, in very extreme cases, you can have a decrease in your urine output uh, and shortness of breath. So just to familiarize everybody with a few terms they may have heard, acute kidney injury is when the kidneys are normal to begin with, but something happens to impact the kidney's function. So either an illness that you're suffering from, or a heart problem, or liver problem, or any other organ malfunction can sometimes impact the kidney's health, where the uh, kidney uh, doesn't work well for a short period of time, but then may be able to recover back completely back to its prior level of health, or may uh, lead on to something called chronic kidney disease. Chronic kidney disease occurs, um, it basically ma means that there is scarring in the kidney and this is a uh, more chronic condition where the kidneys will have, um, may deteriorate in health over time. The worst stage or the final stage of chronic kidney disease is known as end-stage kidney disease. This is the point at which patients require kidney replacement therapy with either something like dialysis or kidney transplant. So what are the causes of kidney disease? The most common cause of kidney disease worldwide and in, in, and in India is diabetes, followed by hypertension. These are systemic diseases that affect many different organs and very often can impact the kidneys. There are other uh, conditions that uh, may specifically attack the kidneys and occasionally may involve the rest of the body as well. Uh, there's a group of diseases called the glomerulonephritides, um, and this is something that can be that is usually diagnosed with the use of a biopsy. Other uh, causes of kidney disease include recurrent kidney stones, which then uh, uh, causes uh, the uh, causes the kidney health to deteriorate, or recurrent infections of the kidneys. And also, uh, one very uh, commonly overlooked cause of kidney uh, damage is the use of certain medications. One group of medications in particular that you should be wary of that are very easily available at any pharmacy is the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. These are called the NSAIDs for short. They include very uh, what we normally consider as pretty benign medications such as ibuprofen, naproxen, acyclofenac, diclofenac. Uh, they come in various brands including Nice, Meftalspaz, Dart, Combiflam. Uh, all of these drugs can be dangerous to patients who already have kidney problems, but they can also impact patients who don't have any kidney problems to begin with uh, if taken in enough quantity and over uh, a long enough period of time.
Other drugs such as Ayurvedic medications can impact the kidneys. There are all, also medications such as and certain antibiotics, which you will have to be careful, with, uh, careful of if you already have a kidney problem. So what are, how do we detect kidney disease? Um, kidney disease is usually detected with the use of certain laboratory tests as well as uh, imaging studies, uh, a blood electrolyte level as well as a, a urea and serum creatinine level usually indicate a problem with the kidneys. Ab but these may be sometimes normal and patients may have abnormalities only in their urine tests where there's protein spillage in the urine or red blood cells or white blood cells in the urine. Sometimes you will see uh, impact on the ultrasound with abnormalities uh, in the way that the uh, kidneys appear on ultrasound. Sometimes a kidney problem may actually be detected by uh, through genetic testing. And I, as I forgot, and I forgot to mention that uh, another uh, group of uh, medical conditions that may cause kidney problems are genetic in etiology, where multiple members of the family have that kidney disease. So the things that are important to remember here are early detection of disease um, and prevention. So if you have any risk factors such as diabetes, if you're a known diabetic or a known hypertensive, a patient with high blood pressure or a sugar problem, or if you've had multiple kidney stones in the past, um, it is a good idea to, or you have family members who, have, uh, ha who are known to have a kidney problem, you may want to get your kidney health checked. Uh, with the use of these simple tests. Visit your medical doctor and you can have these screening tests done. So how do you, uh, how do you think about your kidney health? How do you prevent uh, yourself from developing kidney problems? Importantly, watching your diet and exercising are extremely important. As I said, the most common cause of kidney problems is diabetes. So prevention of onset of diabetes is very important. Prevention of onset of hypertension is very important. Most of these are mostly genetic disorders with a lifestyle component uh, to them. So uh, you may have, diabetes may run in the family, but you may, you may be able to decrease your risk of developing diabetes or at least be able to control your diabetes once if you've developed it uh, with, with your diet. So low carbohydrate foods, uh, watching your sugar intake, and in the same sense, prevention of development of hypertension, or if you already have hypertension, preventing your hypertension from being out of control is really important. And this again can be to a great extent done with diet and exercise. High salt diet is associated with high blood pressure. So cutting your salt intake down, drinking plenty of fluids if your kidneys are healthy, are really important to keep their health going. Avoiding oily, fatty foods uh, is important uh, and um, exercise because obesity is, is also linked with kidney disease. Drinking plenty of fluids is also important to reduce your risk of kidney stone formation uh, as well as sometimes to reduce your risk of kidney infection, uh, kidney uh, related infections. So once you've been diagnosed with a kidney related problem, what are the uh, potential treatments available? If you have uh, acute kidney injury, your condition, your kidney condition may be reversible with treatment. You may, as I mentioned before, require something called a kidney biopsy, uh, or sometimes you may not even require that, but either way, your nephrologist will uh, discuss with you whether or not your kidney uh, dysfunction is potentially reversible. In the situation where you have kidney scarring and you have what is called chronic kidney disease, your uh, kidney uh, function may not be able to be improved with medication, but the focus then becomes to decrease the progression, the rate of progression of your kidney disease, to basically slow the progression of your kidney disease as much as possible. And this is usually done with, again, control over of your blood pressure, control over your, um, your electrolytes and, and your blood work, uh, maintenance of a good diet, uh, maintenance of uh, your exercise and activity, and avoidance of certain toxins to your drugs, certain medications, being really careful with what medications you use. And this is all done in, uh, with regular uh, checkups with your kidney specialist. In the most advanced form of chronic kidney disease, what is called end-stage kidney disease, uh, where there is very little function of, uh, left of the kidneys, you will have to start on uh, kidney replacement therapy. So this involves either dialysis, and there are different forms of dialysis, or kidney transplant. So what are the different types of dialysis? There are two different types of dialysis that a patient may go on. 
uh, and certain patients are candidates, uh, are better candidates for one form of dialysis or the other. Um, hemodialysis is what is uh, most uh, common, which is the most common form of dialysis, is best known to most patients. Um, hemodialysis meaning blood-based dialysis. This form of dialysis, the patient comes to a dialysis center or a hospital where they get attached to a machine either through uh, needles that are placed in a, uh, in a vascular access in the arm or to a catheter in the neck. Uh, they get attached to a dialysis machine where blood is removed, it is uh, cleaned and purified through a the use of a filter and excess water is removed from the body and uh, that blood is then returned to the patient. This usually uh, requires two to four trips to the hospital per or dialysis center per week, um, and each session usually lasts about four hours. So that's hemodialysis. There's a different another form of dialysis called peritoneal dialysis. Peritoneal dialysis does not involve blood, does not involve needles. This form of dialysis is done with the uh, is done actually at home by the patient or a patient's caregiver, where there is a catheter placed in the abdomen of the patient, and there is fluid that is uh, full of electrolytes and uh, it's sugar based with electrolytes, and, it, and that fluid is infused into the abdomen. It stays in the abdomen and it takes out toxins from the blood vessels around the abdomen, it takes out extra water, and that fluid is then drained. So the fluid that is placed in the abdomen looks like water, uh, and the fluid that comes out of the uh, uh, abdomen actually looks like urine. You may put in two liters, and what comes out is 2.2 or 2.4, some extra, uh, extra fluid. So this is called peritoneal dialysis, which is a home form of dialysis. The uh, best uh, way to replace kidney function is really through a kidney transplant. A kidney transplant offers a much better um, uh, lifespan and quality of life and patients are much healthier after doing a kidney transplant than if they just stay purely on dialysis. The role of dialysis is really to get rid of water, excess water, and to clean the blood of toxins that have built up. Dialysis, unfortunately, does not address a lot of the other functions that the kidneys can, uh, can take care of. So with a kidney transplant, a lot of those functions that were taken care of by your original kidneys are now, all, mo almost all of those functions are replaced by this new kidney. Uh, so like I said, patients do much better post-transplant. A kidney transplant can be done through either a deceased donor or through a live donor. A deceased donor requires uh, a patient who has end-stage kidney disease to register with uh, their state uh, and they'll, their name will be added to a, a, a recipient list and based on their blood group and their position on that list, they will receive a kidney from someone who has passed away. In a living kidney uh, transplant, the kidney comes from a close family friend or relative. Uh, we only need one kidney to survive. Um, when you have, when a patient donates a kidney, they are left with one uh, kidney, and that kidney actually compensates to take over the job of both of both kidneys. It grows, it becomes stronger, and actually the blood test can remain completely normal throughout. Um, and the donors are screened from head to toe to ensure that they're healthy enough to donate and that they're not going to be at risk for kidney disease themselves in the future. So in uh, uh, most countries across the world, patients who have diabetes or very bad high blood pressure are not accepted for, as kidney donors because these are the patients that may develop kidney disease themselves. Kidney donors uh, live very well. They typically don't develop any problems themselves uh, in most cases in their lifetime. They do have to be more cautious with their kidney health because now they only have one kidney to rely on. They do have to follow up with their, uh, with their doctors on a regular basis and they do have to be careful again of certain medications and uh, they have to be a little bit more careful with their diet. Kidney transplant recipients, the patients who had end-stage renal disease that then received the kidney transplant, will have to be on special medications uh, for their kidney, uh, for the life, lifespan of that kidney. They will have to have regular blood tests, they will have to have regular uh, checkups with their transplant uh, team to ensure that that kidney lasts as long as possible. The average kidney after a kidney transplant lasts maybe about 10, 10 years, 10 to 12 years. So here at Columbia Asia, we take care of uh, patients with all types of different kidney disease, acute kidney uh, problems, as well as chronic kidney conditions, uh, 
glomerular nephri nephritis, we do kidney biopsies uh, as well. And we do have uh, patients who are on both modalities of dialysis, peritoneal dialysis, as well as hemodialysis. We assess patients for their candidacy for either, and we give, uh, if they're uh, candidates for either modality, patients are given the option. They're trained by our own nurses uh, and basically given the toolkit to be able to perform this uh, either home dialysis at home or to come to our uh, dialysis center and to undergo hemodialysis. Um, we also have a robust transplant program where we are registered with for both deceased donor transplants as well as for uh, live kidney donor uh, kidney transplants. Uh, patients, both recipients and donors are very uh, carefully uh, evaluated medically prior to transplant. Um, and uh, we, we uh, do very close follow-up with, with patients post-transplant, both recipients and donors. So the theme for this year's World Kidney Day focuses on the burden of uh, kidney disease around the world. Uh, so it's about uh, kidney health for everyone everywhere. So I want, you, want everybody to think about their kidney health. I've seen questions coming up now. Uh, feel free to ask me anything regarding your kidney health. Thank you.